so simple. Easier to ball up when it's cold. Easier too. to ball up when it's cold too. Much easier. Good point. I guess one of those Dodge days. Man. All right, so we're making some dough. It's almost the weekend. We love to give it like two or three days um, of fermentation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure my ingredients out and literally take this dough and just stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. Let's get to work. What do we do, chef? We're gonna do about a 1,500 gram bag? 1,500, be good. So 1,500 grams of flour, and now I take my sea salt. I tear out my scale again. I'm gonna do 48 grams, about 50 grams of sea salt, which is cool. I dump, I zero it out, and I just dump the salt right in there. For the yeast, we use Fleshman's Active Dry Yeast. This is tricky because these scales are not going to really dial down one or two grams, and we're really going micro here. So I like to pull what we call my secret weapon, which is the micro scale, my right, chef. And I'm going to go with three grams. Watch this. It's such a small amount. This thing will measure to the one hundredth of a gram, 2.95. Close enough. Close enough. And this goes right into our bucket of heaven of flour. And by the way, I want to stress that we are using or yeah. organic flour. All flour, no matter what you're making, cakes, pies, cookies, breads, organic, you need to go organic. I find if we're working with farms that are using the organic stuff, like this is the best way to go. Take it easy on your system, be kind to yourself. It costs a little bit more money, but still, even with that cost, it's well worth it. With the whisk, dry ingredients, just whisk this stuff together. And I like to do this on like Tuesday, Wednesday before work. We're gonna do 70% water to flour ratio. That's 1,050 grams. 1,058. I get a little heavy on A little heavy. During the week. It's not gonna kill anything. Take my spoon. And I, I mix this stuff around. So I do the spoon first to get like kind of the initial water into the dough. And then I dump it out. And I scrape, these plastic scrapers are awesome. If you guys know where to get a good one, let us know in the comments. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna knead this two minutes. And all I'm doing is lightly pressing in the flour and the water, combining everything together to form one big ball of dough. I'm not gonna let this rest at all. I'm going right to work. This is gonna eliminate all those like dry clumps of flour. Right, Jeff? Yeah, what's cool like doing this on the tabletop versus a mixer is it's way easier to clean up too. Ah, good point. They can see now it's formed one big large clump, one mass of dough, it's super sticky. So it's made that transition from like floury to sticky. I know it's done. And that's been just about three minutes, right? Is that what you yeah. had on there? Two minutes? Three? Two minutes. I'm gonna literally take this and put it into, back into the bowl. Because it's the bulk of the dough, we call this the bulk fermentation. So now what I'm gonna do is cover this with saran wrap, or if you're cool like us. Which we are. So we're super cool. Lids. These are airtight. And I literally take this, oops, wait till it snaps in. Now my dough's gonna bulk ferment. We're gonna take this dough and just put it right into the refrigerator and let it bulk ferment cold for literally three, four, or five days. When we remove this to portion it up in a little bit, um, we've got some other dough we've been working on. Um, we're gonna ball that up for you. But usually the day of baking is when we'll ball it up now. We just pulled this out of the fridge. It's been fermenting in there for about almost three full days. And you can see, because it didn't ferment on the um, countertop, it all cold. So it, it proofed, it doubled in size, but not like if it was a warmer proof, it'd be up to the eight quart mark maybe. This has been our preferred method actually over the last couple of, since we started our dough journey, yeah. we've kind of found ways to tweak it to work with our schedules. We find that bulk fermenting it cold is really ideal. And you'll see this, when we ball this up cold, it's still a very wet dough, but it just balls up so much more efficiently than when it's warm. Here's our system for doing this. These two cup delis, you can buy them at like, you know, your local market. Take it out of the container. I always use a little bit of flour. 
down and I just kind of scrape it out of here and see like the gluten, see those strands? That's your gluten network. So you remove this out of here, scrape it out. Every bit counts. Every bit, there's maybe one more pizza, right? Now, the portion sizes, um, ideally, we like them about eight ounces or 240 grams. Can I get this one on the first try here? See how good I am. 240 grams. I think I got it. I think I got it. Oof. 297. It's terrible. Two putt? Two putt. Right back at 239. So perfect. So now, we're going to cut a bunch of these up. We're trying to make a ball, take all those gluten strands, trap them inside, close that ball up, and let it, um, let it naturally proof over the next couple of days. If we didn't do this step, what we have is like what we call supermarket dough. You see these, we see these- um, Amoebas. Amoebas in plastic bags. If it was in plastic and you don't perform this step, there's, there's no proofing. It doesn't do anything. It just sits, sits there. And when you go to stretch it, it's like super difficult to stretch. It's very elastic. So really important step. So what we do is we make a ball and we trap it and that's gonna help this dough, help it form and make some, you know, some structure, in this case, pizza or bread. So flour it up, both sides, pick it up and just fold it in half. And I turn it one quarter and I grab what, the left hand side and the right hand side. I press my fingers in lightly and then I close it again and I turn and I follow the same sequence. Grab the sides, press in, and close. Lightly. Zen, right? Yeah, you don't want to snap. You don't want to like feel the dough coming through like your fingertips, like squeezing like it's a stress Just ball. One side's gonna be smooth like a baby's butt, right? As I do this, it's getting more and more taut each time, right? As it gets more taut, and I can close it off, I put the smooth side in my palm, and I can be aggressive here on this close. I can just really close this ball up. And you can see now, we have this beautiful ball. So now, all everything is stuck inside of this piece of dough. All the natural gas is inside, right? And so now when it tries to prove, it's gonna expand. It's gonna be like trying to get out, right? All those gases, and it expands by ways of inside this ball. We have a little bit of olive oil, right, inside yeah. the deli. We put the seam side down, and these are ready, and we close it up. And if I'm gonna bake these off tonight, I will put them back in the fridge for a few hours, and maybe three or four hours before I bake, I will remove it and let it get back to room temperature. Why do we ferment our dough for three days? Like, why is it better? Is it, and is it even noticeable? Like, well, here's the, the best example I can give you. We just mixed this one an, like an hour ago, right? And you can see it's just flour and wa water and salt. It's got, it, what does it smell like to you? What does that remind you of? Like, just flour. Yeah, flour. Bag of it smells whole, like bag flour, of flour, right? On a human um, day. So guess what? Like, with a little bit of hot water and additional yeast, we could make pizza in this in like two hours for you. And we could really have this thing blow up, use a ton of yeast, and bake it off in our steels, and actually it would look really pretty. But now, take one of these balls. This one's been proofing, or fermenting, for literally a, three, days. three or four days. Now, what does that smell like? Love. It yeah. is like, it smells like love, yeah. This has been three days versus one hour, and it is so noticeable, the smell, the aroma. More importantly, the taste later. And yeah. so that translates into taste. So you can't, there's no nothing you can do in, in one day to equal this. You can't fast forward time. That's why the best pizza restaurants are doing this. Yeah, oh method. yeah, you, you definitely get like Tony Gimignani or Pizzeria Bianco or you know, you name it in New York City, right. all these great places are just they're fermenting the doughs for a minimum of 24 hours. Right. So take your time. Make your sit, dough. Make a dough, let it sit for a few days. You will become a legendary pizza maker. You gotta use steel too, by the way, right? Yes. Steel. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. <laughs>